Hi everyone, we are live on YouTube. Now, I'm just going to be a little bit distracted back and forth because I do have someone coming here. Um, welcome, welcome. If you're here, say g'day. Today we're going to do a demo on the pounce pads and the stencils. So what I have here in front of me is some of the pounce pads. Um, hello, you made it. Hi, Stella. This one here is the pink one. Um, that's it there. This is how they come, the actual pounce pads. And I have these in stock at the moment, although I did have a bit of a run of them today. Um, hi, Lynette. You have white, pink, and blue. So there's your blue. That's my white one and my pink, okay? So I have one for each colour for obvious reasons. If you, well, let's, I won't say obvious. The reason being is if you don't have one for each colour and you want to swap and change your colours around, you're going to waste an awful lot of the powder. Now, the powder comes in little bags and like that. That's my pink one. Normally, I keep them a bag in a bag. So you can see I use the blue one a lot more than, than the pink. Um, and I also use the white a fair amount too. That's, that's a bag in a bag. Now, I have here something to show you I've kept because one day I, I decided which would be the best one if you only wanted to purchase only one for the moment. Okay, Stella, if you work mainly on really dark fabrics, <clears throat> excuse me, then I'd go with the white. Um, but I think the majority of the time people use the blue um, because it works on both dark and light, as long as it's not a blue, if that makes sense. So I want to show you what happens when you don't seal these up properly, and I'm going to show you how to top this up. It's really important that you know how to do this properly because if you don't, you have the implosion. So this is one of – I had one <laughs> and the wheels fell off. So this is actually a pounce pad um, and, unfortunately, I didn't seal up a little bag on the inside okay so I've made an absolute mess with that but I keep that to explain to people to show people the outcome if you don't do the right thing so learn from my mistakes and this is how you stop this from happening make sure you keep them in a bag in a bag okay um, sorry I'm just going to remove that being chalk, it's easy to get rid of. But in saying that, you don't want to waste it. That would be me. Yeah, I did. It had an implosion. So the white one is the only one that you can get that will iron off as well as, okay, uh, as dusting off. It looks like those people have just rocked up. Um, now... In this little bag is the chalk. It also has my friendly destructions, okay, on how to use it. And it tells you, also with this, brush or wash off. Hi, Michelle. Can you tell me what I am doing wrong? When I use the pants, the vibration from machine makes it disappear. Okay, so, yes. Now, there's a way around... There's, there's a method, all right? So I'll, I'll go through that with you. Yeah, you've there, there is something happening and it's really easy to fix. So this is the, the white one. So I'll just go through this. And um, the white one is a swipe and so the same as the others, but the white one will wash and brush off. And there is also one that will iron off, okay? Now... Um, sorry, just messaging um, a lady, uh, my son, sorry about the lady who's rocked up. Now, when you're going to fill these up, okay, I am going to fill up this, um, and I'm also going to then show you, that's because I've got nails, 
like fake nails. I'm also going to use the blue one today. Um, sounds like they're just here. Um, yep, so um, you can see that the well, this is called the well, um, doesn't have a huge amount of chalk. It's got a little bit. Um, so what we're going to do is open up this. Now, don't be tempted. I mean, you can open up the whole thing, right? And you've got that open, but then re-close it up. Right up to the corner, sorry. Just looking at my phone at the same time. I can just, and I've got my finger in there. So you see how I've got my finger in there? And if I push like that, it creates like a funnel or like a little pouring thing. Okay, and then just pour it in, see? Push it back, tap it down. Um, and close back up and make sure you hear or feel that snap. Make sure it all snaps back in. Then pop that straight back in the bag. So a bag and a bag. Just that all back in there, just like that. Pop it back in. Make sure it's nice and firm. My son could drop in on me while we're doing this. All right. Now that is all ready to go. Bang, bang, bang. Lots of bangs. Okay. So we want to get all that chalk into that on here. We want that covered in white. That's the pounce part. You don't pounce your actual design. That is your pounce part. All right. So that's what you do. That's the, And when you first start it, it takes a few goes at getting that chalk down because it does take a while for it to get and cover all that, all that area there. Um, and, uh, and then you just keep retopping up every now and then uh, when you feel that it's not really giving you the design that you would like the, the thickness or the, 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 um, the proper look to the feel. And like what Julie's just said before about it um, disappearing as well, sometimes that can be an issue. So I'm just going to put these other ones away to the side and I'm going to use my blue one. So I'm just waving at my son. Hi, darling. Come on in. So um, just a little bit of an interruption. They're going to pop these down on the table. Thank you, sweetheart. Um, yeah, I know. So just, yeah. All right. So we're going to now get this onto the fabric. Um, I'm just going to dust it off my hands a bit. Now, what happens, yeah, hi, son, yeah. So what happens with this is if you, whoops, you're right. If you, be careful, sweetie, you'll hurt yourself. Yep, yeah, thank you. So if you actually, when you, when you actually swipe this on to your um, fabric, if you don't do it correctly or if you don't do enough, it will bounce off very, very easily, okay? There's absolutely no guarantee it will stay on the other thing too i find is that if you have a foot and i'll go through the foot in a minute um we, on your machine that bounces like a pogo stick it just goes up and down so i'll just grab my foot so all the yards and bags have just rocked up yeah no more than that uh -huh. so last one okay tell her i'll ring her tomorrow yeah, okay. Okay, so I have in my little bag of goodies here this one. Now, this is this is the Westerly one. It's a generic bush. This does not bounce, okay, and you can use it like free motion, okay? When you have one that looks like a pogo stick, Oh, there we go. Sorry, guys. When you have one that looks like this, 
see this thing here? That, that's what we call like a pogo stick. If you can't squish it down, it doesn't jump. I know they go pop. The, I know they, I know likely the pogo stick type. Yeah, yeah, I don't like either pogo stick type either. Um, so these ones here, pogo stick, so they bounce. And when they bounce, they will dust off, okay, Julie, they will dust off your actual um, chalk. If you can change to either one of these, depending on the machine you, you own, which this is a westerly foot, okay, for high shank, or you can change to, you know, the one I use on my machine, which when we go to the machine I'll show you, um, then it will just glide on the top of the fabric, no bouncing, okay? It's the bouncing that will do it, all right? So uh, something that doesn't get explained very often when people, when people use these, so you really need to make sure the foot that you're using is not a real bouncy, bouncy thing. Um, if it's a small amount of bounce, it's okay, but some of them really, like, tap, 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 and it just, it all just disappears. So that's one trick that can stop it from all disappearing, okay? Then the other thing is when you actually swipe on the um, design onto the fabric, if you're not swiping properly or, or hard or firm enough and um, it's not leaving a, a proper um, imprint on the actual fabric, that can also... Um, uh, cause issues and, and disappear and and you know you've got to also try on long arm can you spray water first then pounce oh haven't done that don't know about that um not too sure about that julie on the long arm spray water then pounce i don't know to me adding water first and then adding chalk could make like a paste kind of effect that to me sounds a little bit dangerous. I would definitely try that on fabric first before you do it on a quilt. Does that make sense? I would definitely not do it straight onto a quilt. I would try it and try with the darker colour. Try with the blue if you've got it. All right. I, I just seen there, uh, Lynette Cherry's there. Hi, Lynette. How are you going? Okay. Now, with these, with these things, okay, just wondered. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Absolutely. That's what it's all about is asking the question so you get the answers you need. I have a really bad habit, but now I've got some of these Yazi bags, I'm going to actually create a bag just for them. But anyway, I'll get back to that another time. This is my little ironing mat. My little iron. Okay. Don't look at the bottom of my iron. Stop looking at the bottom of my iron. It's gross. <laughs> Hi, Beverly. How are you going? Oh, I've got a fly annoying me. That's the wrong way. Okay. Now, if I showed you my bag, oh, actually, look, I'll just show you. New TV plugged in with Ethernet cable and pick is crystal clear. <laughs> this is how I've been keeping them for years. That's it. Like, is that just not revolting? Sorry. <laughs> Normally people don't see this. This is hidden from view, all right? But it works in another way. So when I'm explaining to you, if you're in a hurry and you don't have lovely Loretto, uh, try not to break this one yet. I think she's got this one mounted on the wall. So if you happen to get one, right, and because they come all flat or, you know, you fold them or whatever, and you're sort of sitting there going, oh, look at how crumpled that is. That's just revolting. You know, how am I supposed to swipe on that? These actually are iron. Okay, you can iron these flat. Also remember that if you iron while the chalk's on it, like the blue or pink, because if you iron that chalk, it will stay. You need to wash or dust it off first um, before ironing. Then, look, ta-da, brand new. So if you get these in the mail and they're folded like that and and it's sort of, you know, rolled up or folded. Yeah, Terry, I can see you, sweetheart. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I'm just ironing that those creases out again. 
All right, so now it's really nice and, and flat, isn't it? So the fact that I keep these all really crumpled up has never really bothered me because I know that at any given time I can sit there and just, you know, if so desires, when I do any of my demos, I love to be able to show people that you can actually um, iron these. And yes, you can put them in the dishwasher. Okay, I wouldn't put them in a washing machine, but dishwasher, yeah, absolutely, go for it. Um, that's all right, Terry. Oh, I like that design. Um, yeah, so this one's the rose one, I uh, number 40046. Don't know if I've got it in stock, but I can find out if I can get it. This one I have definitely in stock, um, and this one is 60019. This one here I showed you today. Some of you bought it. Now, it's got chalk on it already, and I'm ironing it on. So I probably shouldn't, but, you know, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> Terry. Yeah, look, I, I struggle um, with some of this uh, technology, let alone some people, you know, mum's age and that, they, they sort of struggle as well. And mum's 72. So, you know, that's three, just like that. They're all nice and flat now, ready to use. They're, they're looking really lovely. So I can sit here and iron these all day or I can just move on to the next thing. Hang on, let me iron this one because I've just seen it. So this is how they work. So if you really want to have them nice and clean, put them in the dishwasher. Um, if you want them nice and flat, just run the iron over it. Just make sure no steam, just a dry iron, okay? And, um, yeah. Now, I've had these stencils for years. You can also um, screen print with them. You only use it because I'm on Hingle. Oh, thank you, Stella. It's an absolute world of information, though, Stella, if you get into YouTube. Lots of things you can see and read about and watch videos and even movies sometimes. So there's another one. Just found me. Hi, Kath. How are you going? Look, I've, you can always go back later. Once we stop, you can always go back and watch. I just thought while we're chatting away, I will just quickly iron these. You can see how they can go from an absolute hot mess um, to really nice and flat in less than a minute, you know. So there you go. So that's how they work. Okay. All righty. There we go. Last one. That's it. Nice and easy. So how cool is that? You can actually iron them. It doesn't really matter um, if you've got chalk on them. I mean, unless you want the chalk to be completely gone. And then you will screw them back up into the bag probably I remember the first time you showed us that you could iron them and I was surprised they didn't melt. No, because they're like a, um, I can't remember the name of the material. I know somewhere I've seen it written on one of these things. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of the stuff. I will find it. <laughs> I'm sure if I Googled. So I'll just, I'll be nice and I'll roll it. There you go. Look, it's nice, pretty. And then I'll stuff it in the bag. So that is that's how I treat them. I'm I'm really quite rough with mine, which is great because if you've got kids, it's not going to freak you out if that you know you've got grandkids and that, and then they sit there and they try and unless you put a pair of scissors to them, then you're they'll cut. Um, what's the secret to removing the chalk on the fabric? Okay, Kath, the blue and uh, blue and pink, blue, pink, and white can all be washed and brushed off. Okay. Then there's a white that also can be ironed off. Whatever you do, do not iron before you wash. Silicon, not really. That's a funny. I wish I could find the name of the stuff. It, as soon as I read it, best way to store them. Um, no breaks or bridges. Hang on, these unique stencils are trying to pull hand and the materials. Nylon mesh, nylon, that's the stuff, nylon. Um, yeah, all right. So wash and um, uh, 
well, I was going to say cold wash. Don't go hot wash. Um, I have a dishwasher. His name is Aaron. <laughs> hot soapy water. Um, uh, Rado, um, we'll get that off. Yeah, easy done. So I'll move this out of the way in my iron because I pretty much, actually, I might just give my fabric that I'm going to use. So the first one I'm going to do is just show you how to um, apply onto a fabric. I'm just using a um, poly wadding and um, this is just a batik. That's it there. I'll just move the iron out of the way. All right. So we can all see really well. Yeah, no, they don't. Um, they have to take, a good, oh, they have to be a fire, I'd say. So what we're going to do is we're going to test out um, our fabric. We're going to test out our thread. We're going to test out everything. Um, I got today out of the new, new stencils that I got delivered in the other week, I actually got some extra ones for myself. I haven't had new stencils for ages. So I got this one, which is Paisley Pineapple. I thought that was really quite pretty. And then I decided to get the Dragonfly which, again, of course, is just two does. And then I decided that I would get Bubble Twist. All right. And um, I can give you the numbers of these. This is 50034, which is Bubble Twist. And this one here is 30454, which is the Dragonfly. And this one here is 30519, and that's a Paisley Pineapple. So what I'm going to do is I'm preparing for what I'm going to make next. Um, I want to actually show you how to apply on this and then I'm going to apply it onto my actual piece that I'm going to use in a minute and then I'm going to stitch it. I'm going to test out on this one first and then I'm going to stitch it onto the one I'm going to keep. So, all right. Just going to remove this one because I might as well use this one. First one there. And straight out, nice and easy. Look, no creases. Okay, so it does have a, a right way and a wrong way. Obviously, that's the back of it. You can tell. When you look at them, you can tell. And the writing will be back to front. Okay, there's writing down there. So I can I can just, using this as a, as a sample piece, I can just use this one here. And what, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to join them up or anything on this. I just want to see how, it's, how it swipes out. And I want to show you how to do it. You always do a test piece. Um, when I'm using these, I would say 80-20, I do, yeah. Okay. Because I just want to see how it applies on the fabric. Each Every fabric's a little bit different too. Some fabrics take the chalk really well and others don't. You know, it depends also on sizing and all that sort of stuff that's in fabric. So it can be a little bit tricky sometimes. So I like to test on something I'm, I'm going to use if I haven't used that fabric for a while or I haven't tried it on that type of fabric. So I haven't done it on um, the plain batik or the, the, you know, turn on tone batik for a while. I normally do it on a black or a white or something like that. So I thought I will give it a bit of a test first and then I'll um, do it on my piece. All right. So very noisy, but that's your pounce part. You don't pounce on here. This is not the pouncy part, okay? Now, depending on where you want to place it on your fabric, you obviously you can tape it down, whatever. It's not going to hurt it if you put a bit of tape, masking tape on it or something. Um, you can even pin it in place if you want to. It doesn't really matter. Um, but i pretty much just going to put it right smack down in the middle. I'm going to hold right here. And I'm pushing right down firm. I mean firm. I've got my hand right down. You can see it's all starting to spread out because I've pushed. And I'm going to swipe. Push, swipe. And I haven't taken my left hand off at all. Still not going to. Because what I want to do is I want to lift and make sure I get a really nice mark. Now I can see it's a little bit fuzzy there. I'm okay with that. It's just because that's where I, I poofed when I pushed it down the second time. So I'm going to take my hand away. 
give that a bit of a shake. Now, your first instinct is go, great, let's take this straight to the machine. No, no, no. All this you can see here, this is all excess chalk. We don't want that at the machine. What's going to happen is, especially if you've got a bouncy foot, it's just going to go bouncing off. What we really want to do is... Um, we want what's underneath that really, that excess chalk, okay, because it sort of compacts it down into the fibres a little, okay. So we just give that a shake. There you go. And that's what I want to see. I want to see that, okay. I just want to see that. I don't want it to be as bright, as bright as it was. I mean, it's lovely to have something that bright, but really, when it comes down to it, it's just going to put chalk into the guts of your machine, okay? So I just want it like that so that when I rub my hand over it or, you know, just touching it lightly, it's not all rubbing off. If I had left all that excess on, when I rub, it would have smudged and made awful mess, okay? Does that make sense to you guys? Does, does that sort of clear up a little bit of it? Yeah? All right, so... Then my next step is going to be to take this over to the machine. So I'm going to um, grab the camera. I'm going to, um, all right, good, Stella, that's good. I'm just going to move some stuff first. I'm going to grab my camera and um, manoeuvre. Bear with me while I move microphones and stuff and come on. Okay. and I'm going to get a chair and I'm hoping that it's not too far away. Oh my gosh. There we go. And let's ask Oops, Daisy to touch things on the screen. Um, could you use your chalk pens over the top now so you don't lose your pattern? Absolutely can. Yeah. Sorry, just let me just move this up. You could, absolutely. All right. So let's just, oops, a daisy. Let's zoom you in. Um, just going to move the chair forward so you guys get a bit of a bird's eye. I'm going to grab this rule of my way. Move my machine closer. There you go. Put my eyeballs on. Always got to have my eyeballs on. The magic gloves. Don't you love the magic gloves? The Marcia Borellis. So I always have my gloves on. And once you've had a couple of injections of um, into your arms and tendonitis and shoulders, you start wearing your gloves all the time. All right, so slide it under. Now, what you, you might be able to see in the camera is um, like a really light version of it. I'll just see if I can zoom it down. I'll, I'll just angle it down a little bit more for you. Bear with me. Aren't they, Terry? They're, they're fantastic. Now, I'm going to put my needle. Now, you can see it's right over this side, um, which is my right-hand side. I don't want it there. I want it furthest to the left, okay? Um, it just seems to work better for the machine. I'm going to put my foot down and always with this foot, and you can see this foot's got like this little screw here, and this is something genomes have. So if you've got a genome, um, you can pretty much get these. I think it's the 9 mil, um, like the high shanks. You can get these for these. Um, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So... That, move that down, zoom in, are in, are we in? Making sure we're as far in as we can be. And I'm going to put my needle in the down position. Oops, the days was the wrong one. There we go. Just to hold the fabric in place. And give me two seconds. Just going to fiddle with this camera, try and get you a little bit closer. Um, manam, 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 manam. So you need to just it's a daisy, that's the wrong one. This one. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right. Ah, there we go. It's a little bit closer for you. Should be able to see a bit better. Okay, so because this foot doesn't bounce, Dan just asks, can you take your left hand off as he off he said you're clever? And said asks, can you take? Yes, I can. So oh, well, I normally take, um, I normally hold with one hand when I'm sewing. You, just asks, can you take your left hand off? He said you're clever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's funny. All right, so I just figured out what he said. All right. I'm not with it, Dan. Sorry, love. <laughs> my brain's just not functioning. Okay, I haven't changed my needle, so it could, could go a little bit. Eh. I've got my tension set on um, um, six. I've got my um, feed dogs down. I've got my machine set on free motion quilting. Foot um, is on that's the correct foot, and I'm just going to slow it down just because I'm not sure exactly which way I'm going. Yep. I'm just looking at it and trying to read it. The other helpful thing is to have your pattern right next to you. He is funny. I didn't realise what you were saying. Sorry, I'm just not with it. Have one of those massive days, Dan. So come around, stitch out. I'll stop there and reposition my hands. And you can see there's quite a bit of dust there from the chalk. Please try and remove it just with some hoofing. Um, we've had her working all day. I have been a very busy girl all day. This also helps, just, just doing this actually helps also with getting my, my stitch length right. I'm just going to stop there and don't like going back to front. Turn around um, because I can get my speed right. Because as most of you know, I actually don't use a foot. I use the stop start button, um, which means I get more of a regulator type of look or feel to it, even though it's not regulated. Um, When you need to stop, just try and stop on a point. Um, we are keeping her safe from the bar left. <laughs> oh, that was the, I, that ram. I reckon he would have. I reckon he would weigh. Oh, he'd have to be close to. He'd have to be close to 100 kilos. He, oh, you know, at least he'd have to be 90, 80, 90. He's massive. He's just this massive big boy. And he's such a sook. He's such a sook. He's so not happy. I, I've moved him away from his girlfriends. Yeah, I'll be frazzled soon. So you can see it's starting. Now I will get up close for you um, soon. Um, you've, I've done tone on tone. So I've used a sort of white creamy fat uh, thread on the white creamy fabric. So it's going to be hard for you to see while I'm sewing. Sorry about that. Didn't need to do that. Get you back in there. Um, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did throw around a lamb. I did the silly things. So when we get when when I finish this, I'll just take it out and show you what I've done. And to be completely honest, as I'm sewing, like the area I'm actually sewing is the only real part that is disappearing as I sew, and that's because the needle is hitting it, and that I'm okay with. And you do, you want it to sort of go away a little bit. You don't want it to be there forever because it's got to, you know, be washed away. It's, it's Otherwise it's going to be in the quilt. Do you know what I mean? And God immediately stabbed her in the foot for it. <laughs> yeah, someone did. <laughs> so we're going to come around and do this swirl one. Yeah, I kicked it. That <laughs> I um, I did a good job on that one. I can tell you, it's very lucky girl. All right, I'm going to get into that point again and pause and just blow out. So, <laughs> just blowing out some of that chalk. You're a cheeky woman, rusty mischief. 
All right, so, okay, we go around. Okay, and obviously I haven't pinned, um, like, um, pinned it or anything. Hi, Julie, how you going? Up there, over there, and around. So this shows me that everything is working just fine. Oh, and the other trick too is when I found out that will help get the chalk off, um, I think it was Catherine that asked about it, is those makeup um, sponges. That will also help. And do you know what else I use? And you'll be horrified. <laughs> I'll show you when I finish this and you'll be like, ciao. Oops, a daisy. I missed a spot. Go back down here. No interruptions by end as a storm uh, that should have only four miles out of it. So, uh, and four mils, is that all? God, that's disappointing. Okay, and then it just tails off because we would join the next one. So if I was going to join these, I would have stopped at that point there, taken it out, repounce the next one, and then go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is cut off. Take that one off because it's very glary. And what I'm going to do is just rearrange this camera a little just so it's down here. Pop it there. Put that in front of you. Where is it? Come on, camera. There we go. And down. There we go. So now you can see I've still got a little bit of chalk, but not a lot. So what I do is I get my glove. I love my stop start button. Yeah, me too. And then I get my glove. I'll just zoom out a bit so you can see what I'm doing better. Here it is there. And I'll get my glove and do that. Give it a good shake. All right. You can take a couple of washes sometimes with the blue because it does get right in. Um, and I'll zoom it back in there. Okay. And that's it there. There's the other side. Tension's a little bit off, it's pulling through, um, but who cares? Go to Priceline and stock up on those sponges. Yeah, I think so. Um, I might actually adjust my tension again. Oh, yeah. Do you know why? It's gone back to 4.3. It should have been at 6. That's because I, um, I fiddled with the screen before and I didn't adjust it. So I've adjusted it back to 6 now, so it's good. So that is what's going to happen. That's what you're going to have, all right? So you tone on tone. I couldn't go back to a foot pedal, no. So who who taught you guys to do it with your stop start button? Was it just from me or was it did you already know about that? Was it something you'd already learned? Your new machine, yep. You learnt it on that, yep. Yep. So, all right, so we've tested this. This looks pretty good. So I'm going to, rem like, change the camera back. I'm going to move it over and over that way. And, um, and I'm going to now get my next project ready. Yes, you heard that correct, next project. Can I use stop start nearly sword my hair? So it'd be hand to fan. Oh my gosh, Kath. Really? Wow. Oh. 
That's scary. Can't be doing those things. So let's just grab the camera. Push it down. Move that out of the way. Get yourself in here. Move it out of the way. Yeah, I knew what you meant. Yeah, sword. Huh. Um, so that is that. Okay. So most of that chalk is out. Um, and I could see the whole way. And uh, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So the same fabric. A um, bit bigger. I am going to just... It is lovely, isn't it, um, Gidget? It's not really, um, no, it's not like I really did anything. <laughs> I just used the pattern was there. Just made it, the pattern makes it look good. It's a pretty pattern. It's very pretty. Okay. How the heck did you know? I, I'm trying to imagine. Did you get your fingers too close to the actual foot, did you? Like you had your hand in the wrong spot. I'm just trying to imagine how on earth you could get yourself so close to the uh, needle. That just freaks me out. Alrighty. So um, I think do I need to, yeah, just zoom out a little bit more. You're going to see all my rubbish in the background, the mouse, the whole pinky brittle. doesn't matter. We just want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, yeah. Move that back a bit, back a bit, so you've got a bit more there. Just move that out of the way. Oh, you so too, yeah, I, see, I don't normally sew very, I know it looks like I do, but I really don't. Now, these, like these, I said before, these are the patterns that I decided on. I haven't decided how I'm going to have them yet, so I'm... Just wanting you to see the whole picture here. So I'm going to create an area and um, I just need my ruler again. Now, I'm going to use a different chalk. It's a clean, um, very disappointing as we are drought affected. I hope we get more rain soon. My garden is still dry. Yeah, it, it would be very disappointing. If it's a clean area, you're not going doing enough craft. Oh, it's this big. It's not even a metre square, trust me. <laughs> it's half a metre square. <laughs> trust me, there's not much room here that's not full of something. Okay. So I'm going to come in. This is a two and a half inch ruler. So that's my half. I'm going to come this side, I think. Just looking at it. I need to put my eyeballs back on, I think. Um, okay, so half one, one and a half, two. So I'm going to come up about probably one and a half inches from around the edge. And I know this is going to really freak you out because it's a bright pink, but I want this so you can see it. Um, so round about that, just all the way. This is actually a piece of my other bow and chalk thing. I've just grabbed it out of the little packet because I've put my little mechanical thing. This is the bigger pencil, not the little, little one. Um, and I put it somewhere and I can't find it. So I thought I'll use this because it's really bright and you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, so that's one and a half to about there. Gives me a bit of a... An edge and just turn it that way. I might do it about two and a half inches from there. And about two and a half inches from there. Now this fabric is with the fabric, okay, by this way. And I have made it as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve inches wide by width of fabric. Just FYI, if you're wondering what I'm doing. 
Okay, so I've come in two and a half inches that way and one and a half that way. The lady where I bought my machine from used to have from but have to use my other machine and it has a foot at retreats. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, so you learnt. Yeah, okay, good, good. Because a lot of people don't realise that you can do it. And, yeah, you can. So I'm going to use this one as a border and I'm going to come on the inside. But first things first, take it out of its plastic because it's absolutely useless to me in a plastic. And... Come on, darling, open, open. This one is two inches wide. So it's going to take up a fair amount of space, which is nice. Um, and I do have join lines and stuff on these, which is great. And then I'm also going to take out my dragonfly. I'm only going to use these two, I've decided. I'm not going to use the other one that I, that I used before. I don't need to. I think it's just going to be overkill. Um, this is going to go across top and bottom. Um, I'm arming and ahhing about going down the side. I'll see what it looks like before I do that. That there, I can't see that because I'm off camera there. I have got that there, which is like a, a little um, cross hatch. They actually is back to front. Um, there it is. That there, that little line there, by the way. I have that on that line right there. Just marking that there. And I'm running across to here. I never heard of anything other than a treadle till I was 35. Wow. Then I have bought myself, just bought myself my first ever new machine. Didn't know anything about your machine. Oh, wow. Okay. That's, that's awesome that you've got your very first machine. I'm glad that you're actually putting it to good use. And it's more than a treadle. I mean, treadles are amazing. They're just so beautifully. So I'm also looking at the top of this and I can see where I've made my mark underneath and I want to make sure I just slide it up so that it runs parallel with that line that I drew and that cross is still over here, which is off the screen, um, and I, that's where I'm going to hold it still. I'm going to get my blue pounce pad. Dusty. Oops. I just jammed it shut. All right. I'm going to hold it in position. I haven't changed anything and push and swipe. And I'm only going to do it once because I reckon I got it. All right. That is looking pretty good. I can see it's really dark up this end, which you're having trouble to see there. And then it's much lighter down here. So I'll give it a bit of a shake. Not a big one. A little bit hard to see. So I might just swipe it off and do it again and do two swipes. Um, I think I have it that way. Yeah, I do. So let me just take that off. So line up that with your chalk line. And the top of this, it's all the way up there. All the way up there. That one needs to be on there. You can pin it down if you want to or tape it. Tape it's probably better. I have been known to pin these. Keeping it as straight as possible. Pounce. Push. Let's do it twice just in case. Let's lift pretty good it's just going up on that line there but I can I can tweak that that's okay um actually looks like it's on a bit of an angle to be honest so going for a third time try a third third time's a charm 
Okay. Get that little thing there. All the way out there. So hold that. Push that up. And line it up again. I'm going to do it this way. You can see that's already off filter. So that looks much better. I'm just going to go for that. And this will be, yeah, third time's a time. Push down at the start and across. Push down and across. I'll go on three times because I don't think I put much powder in that. I didn't, but we have a winner. So they are all lined up evenly. And I haven't joined the second bit on yet. Give it a bit of a shake. And I'm not giving it too much of a shake because I don't want to lose my pattern. Then I would get that dot, which is from here on that pattern, and line it up with that one. It's that one there. There it is there. Line it up best I can. And it's going to go past that corner, which, you know, I'm okay with that. It doesn't really matter. Okay. There we go. Now I've got the top water. A little shake and just ready to go. I am not going to go past this here. I buried my little bit of chalk down. I don't know where I put it. I can put it back in there. So it's going to go to here regardless. And I'm going to start over here. Okay, so I'm only going to go between these two points. So I'll see if I can go the other way. So only between these two points. All right. There. So I'm going to stitch that out. But before I even take it to the machine, I want to have a quick look at it because I want to see what direction I'm stitching and what I'm doing first. So I'm just looking at it and I can see I've got to go up and around and around and around and around those circles there, up there, back. I think it might even be... Yeah, no, that'd be it. Then, so if I start that way, go up. Yeah, okay. So it wants me to start on this side. So I'd come up, up there, down, up, down. And then I'd come and do those circles up to there, back in, and just keep going. All right. So let's do that one. So I'll get this stuff out of the way again. Get the chair in the right position. And let's stick it out. Come on, chair. Come with me. Come on, camera. There we go. You dizzy yet? You know, only because I'm trying to measure... Um, and get things in the right position um, because I'm trying to work in a small space so it's going to look rather technical and I never make anything look easy. <laughs> well, I do make things look easy, I suppose, but I don't do it the easy way sometimes. Sometimes I just can't help myself and I've got to do it the hard way. All righty. So light, put down, needle down, and I'm just going to do that circle there. I'm going to stitch that little bit of thread in. I'm just going to stop there. I'm going to speed up my machine. And I can see, you know, even though it's not bouncing, it's still going to take that chalk off. There's a little bit of excess there, just getting into those smaller areas. Turn it around. Get that out of the way. 
what they say. Never perfect, always happy. Let's see so you can zoom in a little bit better for you. Okay. All good. We're in. And always, if you're unsure, you've always got the pattern there too. You know, like in all seriousness, it is going to be whatever you make it. And as long as they are all exactly the same the whole way, no one's going to know. Okay. So even if you change it up and do it a little bit different to what the pattern originally was, who cares? You know what I What sounds muffled, Stella? You sound coming and going. Hang on. Oh yeah, I know why. Sorry, my little my little mic you think. Is that better? I forgot about my mic. No sound at all. Hang on. No, it's definitely okay on my end. How's that? I haven't touched anything else. No, sound good my end. Okay. So it might be your new TV. <laughs> Sorry, shouldn't laugh. All right, so do the circle. Oops, I went the wrong way. Hold on. Okay, round. Round, 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 and go down here, up, out, about, and this way, and up again, and back down, and back up to that circle. And then the next one, just loop to loose. And, and you know, the, it is fairly light. Oops, that is something I got lost. Yeah. <laughs> but when you want, went back to the sewing at muffles. Okay, when you're not sewing. Okay, all right. I'll stop talking while I'm um, sewing, all right?
Okay. Now we got to, oops, yes, now. Okay, no sound. Okay. <laughs> All right. Just taking off um, my gloves and everything else. Just give my hands and that a rest for um, sweaties. Right, my face. This way. Okay. I do the cut off. <clears throat> Pops the days, and I'll zoom out. So I've just stitched that there, okay? So just straight down there. I've started at one and I've finished here and I literally have not gone any further than that pink line, okay? So that's just that one there. I like that. I think that looks pretty swish. You imagine that in a border all the way across your quilt. You see what I mean? So you would just... Line up those, you'd only do one, maximum two, uh, two patterns at a time. Don't try and do any more than that. It's just too many and it'll wipe off by the time you get there, especially when you've got your, your quilt, um, you know, like rolled up and stuff, all right? So that's going to go across there. How good is that? Yeah, it is. It's lovely, isn't it? So... Um, so then what I want to do is I'm going to do the same down the bottom. I'm going to have one on up there and one here. And then I'm going to put some dragonflies here. But I won't do it all at once because we've been on here for an hour already just doing this. So what I want to do is actually supply you with some more of this video as we go along. Let's progressively get this there. But this gets you started on using the pounce pads. Have a practice and have a play. My next step is going to be, in, in like in a part two, will be to actually line up the bottom one because we need to put a bottom one down here, long here, and then we're going to put those dragonflies. And I'm going to flip them so that we can have them go in different directions. And I think that would be, that would be good. It's because her mic is only picking her voice, not the machine. Yeah, okay. That would look great on a pillow, Shan. Yeah, exactly. Now you're talking my talk. Um, so I'm actually thinking that this would make, going this way, um, I'm actually thinking that it would make um, something nice that way rather than this way. So, um, yeah, so just keep this in mind. And this can also work as a quilt as you go. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Because I have gone through three layers. Done deal. You're with me, Rado? You're picking up what I'm putting down? Think about your crazy quilting. Joining these together. Yeah, yeah. Looking good. So let's just start with creating. My, my bird is barking at the door. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this one as well. We'll do that on the next video. And then we'll do some dragonflies. All right, and then I'm reckoning we will actually sort of, yeah, work this into with the other items that we've got there. And I haven't forgotten about your crazy patchwork one. I've got to finish either, okay? So we will keep making this into something, And um, but for today I reckon that's heaps. And I'm, I'm pretty tired and I only want to give you what, you know, the good stuff, not what the tired part of me. So let's stop there. You nice and close so you can see. Majority of the chalk is gone because of the way I've applied it. Okay, looks good. Hey, all right. So practice, practice, practice applying it and practice getting it off your fabric. Practice stitching it in. Now, if you stitch in, sorry, it's just gone fuzzy. If you stitch in, um. Uh, you know, you stitch in with your, and your thread turns blue. I mean, don't stress. It will eventually come out. Sometimes, depending on the kind of thread it is, it might not be very nice. So just test, test, test. Go have a good rest and we will catch you next time you are on. Absolutely real, Stella. Um, I will be on tomorrow. Um, not as many times, but I'm going to probably just do maybe one sale and then we might do another part of this. We might do the other side. 
um, so that we can get ready for the dragonflies. And I'm thinking when I'm talking paint, I'm talking paint, I'm talking, you know, quilt as you go, um, all those sort of things. Imagine that even as, you know, what do they call them? Um, oh, God, I can't even think. Uh, placemat and stuff like that. Table runner, table centre, all perfectly well. Respectable things to make out of it. All right. So we will talk to you soon. I will see you tomorrow on Facebook. Um, I'm just going to put that up here. I think I've faded away. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, nearly lost the camera. Got the chair. I'm still here. <laughs> I am fading away. I won't lie to you. So I will see you tomorrow. Um, we'll do a live sale around about one, and then we'll do um, do another demo with this. All right. So, but that'll be it for the day. And um, if you're wanting any of those templates, go back, have a look at the videos from today. There were plenty of templates being talked about. And you could send me a list of those if you're wanting to. We will see you tomorrow on Facebook and YouTube. Bye, guys. Thanks for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Bye.